We're going to get an exclusive look at one of the most forward-thinking of pieces of technology, which has the potential to unlock the power of the human mind. Far more than just a wearable, will you please welcome on stage Think Founders, that's T-H-Y-N-C, Jamie Tyler and Izzy Goldwasser. Here we go. Thank you. I know we're the only thing that stands between uh, you and a pint of Guinness, so we'll make it very interesting for you. Uh, first, uh, big thank you to Web Summit. Uh, it's been actually, we've only been here a short time, but it's been a great experience so far, and we really appreciate being here. Uh, I'm Izzy Goldwasser, CEO of Think, and Jamie Tyler is the co-founder and CSO of the company. You'll hear from Jamie shortly. So today we're going to have, uh, I think, a great conversation, at least it'll be maybe a one-way conversation, <laughs> but afterwards you can find us. We're going to talk about a, a big topic. So um, our company is really in the realm um, where biology and technology converge. Um, more specifically, it's about taking neuroscience and consumer technology and bringing them together to create a whole new category of products. The idea is to tap into the power of the mind. And tapping into the power of the mind is a truly revolutionary idea, especially if you can use it to overcome a basic limitation that all of us have. You see, we're not wired to be able to call up our best stuff at will. We cannot call up our energy, our focus, our calm, our self-control, our creativity, our confidence, our motivations. We simply aren't wired to do that when we want to. And that's where technology can come to, into play and make a huge difference. And that's what we're doing at, at Think. Our, our goal is to tap into the power of the mind so you could call up your best stuff in minutes. And that's what we bet the entire company on. So three years ago, um, we had this vision. It was pure vision. And um, we also had this prop that we used to raise uh, $2 million. I don't know if uh, people here remember this, but uh, this is uh, a neuralizer from uh, Men in Black. And if you look into, the, into this light when I, when I turn it on, you're all going to give us, no, I'm just kidding. Uh, this, this was the pitch three years ago. And so with Pure Vision and some background and as founders, we, we raised initial capital and we took that idea and, and put together a team of neuroscientists, engineers to really uh, attack the problem and find the first approaches to develop a consumer product that you could use to call up your best modes. And that is what we're going to talk about today. Uh, the quote here on the screen is from our lead investor. And as you can see, it's always great to have fine investors that resonate with your vision and feel as passionate as uh, the founders do about what could be done. So the area we're going to be delving into for our first product is an area we're all too familiar with. We are all experts in managing our energetic states and our relaxed states. Um, we use caffeine, we use alcohol, we use supplements, uh, and we use other things, meditation, music. I mean, we really spend, if you think about it, quite a lot of time trying to feel or get into the zone we want to be in. And our, our goal at Think is to bring consumer tech to this realm, to the realm of energy and calm and really the realm of feelings, which is not normally what you, what you hear about with consumer technology. And we've done just that. So in the past year and a half, we've developed the first two effects. We can now induce energetic states and calm states using purely consumer tech and nothing else. And Jamie Tyler is going to um, tell you how we do this, how we generate the effects, how we improve them and validate them using neuro signaling. Jamie? Thanks, Izzy. Um, so I'm going to talk to you uh, today a little bit about the neuroscience behind um, the technology that we've been developing. Um, we've heard a couple times today there's been a lot of analogies to the brain and the nervous system in various contexts. but. <clears throat> um, I'll dive a little bit deeper into actual neuroscience um, for you. So 
how do we um, how do we uh, bias brain activity? Um, we we basically have two different types of technology that we rely on. Um, one is something that I've been working on for um, about eight years now, and it's using ultrasound. So pulsed ultrasound can be transmitted through the skull to deep brain structures in the brain that underlie certain functions that subserve particular behaviors. Um, the other method is something that's been around for quite some time, electrical waveforms. So electrical stimulation has been used um, to modulate brain function for um, really about 100 years. And so it's a much more advanced uh, technology um, that's really ready to be commercialized and used um, for some of the things that we'll continue to talk about. So what are the mechanisms of action underlying um, think neurosignaling? Um, we call this a mechanistic triad. There's really, you know, the, the brain really is, it's, it's very complex. It processes many different types of signals. They have different paths by which, which they enter the brain um, to allow you to process, integrate, and synthesize information. Um, so we, the mechanistic triad that we're talking about here, there's three different modes that we can enter the brain or be able to modulate brain activity. One of them is to directly modulate neural circuits in the brain. Um, and you see this in the top where we, where we have two different effects that one is um, you, we can deliver basically more energy for you and I'll show you some data on that in a minute and the other is we can make you feel more relaxed and so to make you feel more energy we, we target the, the right inferior frontal gyrus or the orbital frontal cortex um, and then to make you more relaxed we target parasympathetic nerves um, in the orbital frontal cortex. Skin and cranial nerves is another way that we can modulate activity. Um, as you pass electrical waveforms or neurosignaling waveforms through the skin and the skull into the brain, you inherently start to affect nerves that underlie the skin and that innervate the skin. And these have very powerful effects that I'll tell you about in, in just a second. And the other is neuromusculature. Um, you know, it's, it's like many people may recognize that if you smile often, you start to feel better, right? So bas basically applying neurosignaling waveforms to muscles, skin, nerve, and directly to brain can um, drive certain effects that might be desir desirable to, to basically everyone. So um, many people like to think of the brain as a black box. We don't really understand what goes on inside the brain, and that's, that's really not true. We actually know a fair amount about the brain and how it works. Um, there's certain pathways, distinct neural pathways. Um, and so what you see here, basically there's 12 cranial nerves. So there's 12 pairs of cranial nerves. Your cranial nerves are really important. They're often overlooked. They um, modulate different types of sensations. So if you think about the power of uh, a kiss, for example, um, a kiss, all the information that's carried through your brain and it modulates your behavior and arousal and blood rushing to your face is carried by five cranial nerves, right? Um, another example, everything you taste, everything you smell, all these are also carried by cranial nerves. Um, when you get distracted because you accidentally bite your lip or or uh, chip your tooth, all this is also carried by cranial nerve information. And so those changes in, in levels of arousal are largely mediated by cranial nerves. And by tapping into cranial nerve pathways, we can essentially modulate two different parts of the nervous system, the, the parasympathetic and the sympathetic nervous system. And so for those of you that don't know exactly what those are, the sympathetic nervous system is the fight or flight part component of the nervous system, and the parasympathetic nervous system is the rest and digest. And by modulating the balance between these two, as well as cortical circuits, we can deliver um, specific effects. So the safety profile, this is probably something everyone thinks about. When you start talking about applying neurosignaling waveforms to the head and you're targeting brain circuits and nerves, one of the first questions people will ask is, is it safe? The simple answer to that is yes. Um, this is a very safe technology. It's been around for, uh, in, in practical use for about 40 years. Um, we, uh, you know, your brain naturally has an, uh, an endogenous electric field that's about three millivolts per millimeter. And while that may not mean a lot to many people in the room, the, the technology that we have developed delivers about half that energy to the brain. So our, our basically, what we're delivering to the brain is about half of what's already there naturally anyhow. The, the technology really is, is around the, the waveforms and the algorithms that we use to generate, to be able to supply signaling to the nervous system. That's how it works. Um, you know, we're 100 times um, lower, at, we, we operate at 100 times lower intensity thresholds than anything that would actually damage the brain. Um, there's an excellent safety record. We've run safety stop, uh, trials. We've conducted trials on um, a couple thousand people now um, we've conducted chronic trials, um, and there's also a built-in safety mechanism that, you know, your skin 
will basically see the largest electric field of anything that, that happens to your body using our devices. Um, and so if your skin starts to become irritated, you can just take the device off and nothing will happen to your brain. Um, so um, I'd like to describe some of the data from our acute studies. Um, and in this particular example, we, you know, again, we've run, you know, a, a, a few thousand people, a few thousand sessions of, of studies in different ways. Um, we collect various types of data, so we'll collect galvanic skin response, heart rate, heart rate variability, pupillometry, so we measure how much people, people's pupils dilate. We do uh, MRI or fMRI bold contrast imaging, EEG, um, and several other quantitative metrics. We also measure um, salivary cortisol and amylase. But in this particular set of data, what we found is, you know, there's many different types of sensors in the world. And, you know, a lot of these sensors work okay. Not many of them are great. What we found is the best sensor is actually just talking to people and asking them how you feel. Because people are very good at describing how they feel. And so in these data, what we did is we basically gave people one of two different um, vibes. We call them vibes. One is an energy vibe and one is a calm vibe. Um, and we asked people to rate it on a scale of one to 10, um, where a five was essentially for the energy vibe was a, a, a single cup of coffee or a Red Bull. And on the calm scale, uh, uh, five was a, a single drink of alcoholic beverage, like a glass of wine um, or a beer. And so we've gotten to the point now where 85% of the people who experience or use the vibe on the energy vibe will rate it um, significantly higher than a single cup of coffee or a Red Bull. And if you note on the red line, that's the placebo. So these are all placebo controlled studies. Um, it, it, you'd be surprised, it's actually really hard to beat the placebo and we spend a lot of time working on developing the algorithms to be able to do that. Because if you don't do anything to someone and you just place an inert object on their head and you say you might feel more energy, there's actually a fair amount of people who will say, oh, that's, you know, I, I feel like I had a couple cups of coffee and you didn't do anything to them, right? So um, beating that is actually quite difficult. And so for the Calm Vibe, um, we've gotten to the point where 97% of the people who try the Calm Vibe actually experience an effect that's, they describe it as, a, as drinking a glass of wine or meditating. Some people describe it as being worry-free or carefree. Um, and they actually enjoy the experience, right? So people actually, they really enjoy the experience much more so than they would uh, drinking a glass of wine. It's fundamentally a completely different type of experience, right? Because um, this is probably something many of you haven't tried before. Um, but I think most people find it to be quite enjoyable. And so that's for the acute case. Um, I'd now like to share some data with you that I, I this is, I actually just uh, revealed this data for the first time at MIT a couple days ago at a, a neurotechnology um, summit there. Um, and, and what we did in this study, we had an independent uh, university, the City College of New York, conducted a study for us across six weeks using sham stimulation conventional state-of-the-art, it's called transcranial direct current stimulation, that's the kind of the state-of-the-art, the way that it's done in the academic world now. And then what we refer to as uh, uh, our vibes, our transcranial pulse current stimulation. Um, and when we looked at, we looked at safety was one of the primary endpoints. Um, it was completely safe, it was equivalent to the sham, it actually beat the safety profile of the TDCS. Um, but what was interesting, and we didn't anticipate this, when people use the vibes five days a week for six weeks, and we basically ask them before and after each vibe. We, we have a, it's called, the, it's called the state trait anxiety inventory, which is just a standardized, cross-culturally validated inventory to assess anxiety. The, there's a significant reduction in the level of state anxiety for the people who ha used our vibes compared to the sham and the state-of-the-art TDCS, right? And so I think that's, you know, it's very powerful that people use it every day and they basically have this reduction of um, anxiety levels. And so, Izzy. Thanks. The work uh, Jamie's doing and the team under Jamie, I think, uh, is going to get m more and more acknowledgement. It's really obviously been part of the company, and now the data is going to be published and, and spoken about more, more uh, routinely, and deservedly so. I mean, it really is a leap forward in, in applying neuroscience and translating it into something practical. Um, but the impact of that, of that science is gonna be felt starting next year when we launch our first product. And as, as seriously as we take our neuroscience, we take our consumer technology efforts to design great, a great product uh, and a great overall platform. So just for a, for a web summit only, we put together a sneak peek of our product um, for your enjoyment. 
And this is the first time we're showing a wearable device that can change your state of mind. Uh, again, just a sneak peek, but I think you'll enjoy it. Stay tuned for the full version with more people. <laughs> um, we're very excited about our first product. It's, it's a, a really a revolutionary design that really embeds the technology and science that Jamie spoke about. Um, we have not unveiled the product yet, and therefore can't talk to you about the details of the design or the price or the, the exact timing, but it's happening in 2015. And if you are looking to see the first wearable that can shift your state of mind, uh, you know, follow us, join us. We are, we are really all about that vision I talked about at the beginning of my talk, the convergence of biology and technology, tapping the power of the mind so you can call up your best. Thank you very much. <laughs>